Hello everyone, Mr Shepherd here again with some history and our walk for today is to understand how the Great Fire of London started and the key events. Alright, so there's a video there to watch first of all. This gives you a bit more background information. Okay, how did the Great Fire of London start? The Great Fire of London began in the early hours of Sunday, 2nd of September, 1666 began on Pudding Lane at a baker's shop belonging to a baker called Thomas Farriner. Here's a picture of Pudding Lane as it may have looked in 1666. Okay, so remember last lesson we were talking about these old buildings, um, the Waddle and Daub, very close streets, very narrow, and the fact that these buildings were very close together. All right, present day map of Pudding Lane. So for those of us that know London, we've got Monument Tube Station here, and then Pudding Lane not far from there. You've got the Thames here, okay, and Tower of London is just a little way away. All right, so early Sunday morning is when the fire started. Now, the famous Great Fire of London started on Sunday, the 2nd of September, 1666, in a baker's shop in Pudding Lane, as we've said. The baker was called Thomas Farriner. This is just a, a um, recreation of what it might have looked like. There's Thomas heading home or heading off. Really, he lived there, so he would have been just going for a walk, I suppose. But there's the fire starting. Okay, it's believed that Thomas had forgotten to put out a fire that he had made to bake some bread. All right, Sunday the 2nd of September, 1666. So this is the weather report for the day. Well, this is just a made-up one, obviously. Hot, dry, and windy, okay? It had been a very hot uh, summer. And so the Thames water level was very low following the hot summer. The fire began in Pudding Lane, house of a baker, Thomas Farriner. Thomas Farriner was the baker to the king. When questioned later, Farriner said that he had checked all five fire houses in his house and he was certain that all the fires were out. Nevertheless, when, his fam when the family were awoken by smoke in the early hours of the morning, the fire was so well established that the family could not use the stairs they had to escape through an upstairs window so the fire was so um had taken hold so much they couldn't go downstairs to get out they had to climb out through an upstairs window okay now by 3 a.m the fire was so so well established that it could be seen from a quarter of a mile away Samuel Pepys, who we talked about last lesson, is a famous diarist who used to keep a diary, and he worked for the king, and he used to keep a diary of events, and he wrote about what was happening. And now we learn a lot about what was happening in the Great Fire of London from Samuel Pepys's diary. Sunday evening, mid-morning. So we're saying that's what it looked like Sunday evening. This is mid-morning on the Sunday. Okay. So news of the fire spread through the city. Streets were filled with people running to escape the fire. The fire had burned by Sunday night half a mile to the east and north of Pudding Lane. That's quite a big area, isn't it, if you think about that um, being consumed by fire. King Charles II had been informed of the fire and he had instructed the mayor to pull down any houses necessary to stop the spread of the fire. However, in a city where the houses were very tightly packed, pulling down houses, enough houses to stop the fire before the fire took hold was a difficult, almost impossible task. Okay, early Monday morning. Buildings very close together, as we've said, so the fire spread 
very quickly, especially with the added help of the wind. People had to carry their belongings to safety using rowboats on the Thames. Okay. So, here's Monday the 3rd of September 1666. Weather report, hot, dry and windy. Okay, so obviously it doesn't help if you've got very high, hot and dry conditions. If you've got wind and you've already got a fire going, it's very easy for those sparks to be blown. And when you've got houses very close together, all made of wood, everything's very hot and dry, that's terrible conditions for fire. Okay, so the fire can spread very quickly and easily in those conditions. The fire continued to spread in the householders. This is early in the morning on the Monday. The fire continued to spread and the householders had to choose whether to help the firefighting efforts or to attempt to save goods from their own houses. The Thames was full of boats laden with property rescued from houses that had burnt down. Profiteers made money by hiring carts and boats at high prices. Most people could not afford their prices and could only save what they could carry. So at this point, you've got people all trying to get away from the fire, loading up all their property and things into boats and going to the safety of the, the Thames, okay, to try and get away from the fire. They're also You've also got people making a lot of money by hiring out different vehicles and ways of travelling, um, so carts and boats and things like that, um, and people are hiring those so they can fill them up with all their things from their houses and try to escape with their belongings. Okay, so you imagine if there was a fire and you needed to get away from it and you needed to take everything out of your house, it would be a lot of things, wouldn't there, that you'd have to load up. All right. Late Monday morning, okay, carts were banned from going near the fire. So they've stopped people from being able to go and get their stuff to try and bring it away from the fire at this stage. Okay, the fire was now 300 yards from the Tower of London and orders were given for extra firefighters to be sent to prevent its destruction. Many of the London's wealthiest citizens had taken their money their valuables to the tower for safekeeping. That's by Monday evening. Okay, Tuesday, St Paul's Cathedral was destroyed in the fire. Okay, so a really big cathedral um, got destroyed by fire. Would have been a big, you know, important, prominent building at that time. Tuesday, the 4th of September, 1666, weather report hot, dry and windy. Okay, early in the morning, the fire showed no signs of stopping at all. Uh, all attempts to check its spread had failed and the firefighters were getting very tired. By the afternoon, all the, all the carts and barges, boats and coaches had been hired out. By 8pm, the roof of St Paul's Cathedral caught fire. And by the end of the day... Uh, it had been proved to be one of the most destructive days of the fire. St Paul's Cathedral was one of many buildings that were destroyed on this day. Okay, so lots of destruction. The fire is really out of control, burning lots and lots of properties in London. All right, by Wednesday, the fire had started to burn more slowly as the wind had died down. Okay, and Wednesday the 5th of September, weather report, hot, dry, but no wind. So that, that gave them a bit of uh, a chance of getting control of the fire because it wasn't being pushed along by the wind. So the conditions were a bit more favourable to putting it out. Early in the morning, the fire continued to burn, but due to the fact that the wind had dropped, it was not spreading so rapidly. By midday, the destruction of another number of houses in Cripplegate had stopped the spread of the fire and allowed firefighters to put it out. So at this time, one of the things that they would do to try and stop fire is literally create what we call a fire break. So you, you remove the fuel for the fire by taking it out um, around the fire. So they did this by pulling down the houses, okay, the wooden houses that were in the path of the fire, 
they'd remove some of those so then the fire had nothing to burn so they actually used explosives to blow up houses in the fire's path okay and then it would get to a point where it didn't have anything else to burn for a bit and then it would stop it okay by the evening all fires in the west of the city had been put out by thursday because the wind had died down many of the houses were pulled down to stop the fire spreading the fire had stopped luckily only six people died but thousands of people were left homeless they lost their businesses or lost many of their possessions so you had a lot of homeless people with nothing now they just um have lost their homes and have got absolutely nothing except what they were able to carry all right so we've got um, some worksheets to complete and go off and do them now and then you can come back and we'll have a look at this plenary together all right so why did the fire spread so quickly let's have a look at these can you choose the reasons why the fire spread so quickly from those below okay what do we think of this first one it had been hot so not much water was left in the Thames that's true isn't it okay it'd been a very hot summer the level of the Thames was very low okay so that wouldn't have helped um the people that are trying to get water to put the fire out have not got access to the same amount of water they would have normally so that's gonna that's gonna stop them from being able to do the job putting the fire out okay the houses were made of bricks well no they weren't so much made of bricks during that time they were wattle and daub so that one's not true they were made of bricks after the fire they started making the houses out of more um uh, better materials that wouldn't that wouldn't burn the houses were made of wood and had straw roofs well that's true isn't it okay those houses were made of wood okay and they did have straw roofs it was very windy yes that's true okay that didn't help at all the wind blow the fires they blow the sparks they blow the flames and make the fires more intense and they also move them quickly especially when you've got houses built very close together like you did in london in 1666. the firefighters had hoses and plenty of water to use no they didn't in modern uh fire when when we have uh fires now we've got modern equipment and the firefighters have got access to a lot of water and they're able to spray it at really high pressure and and deal with the fires that way but they didn't have any of that technology in 1666 so they didn't have access to a lot of water people resort to using buckets okay they'd have leather buckets and they try to put the fire out like that and the fire squirts that we saw last week okay which were just like we said um similar to sort of but if you've ever used a super soaker um you know for water fights that's the sort of thing that they were using to try and put the fires out but these obviously they were made out of brass but that's a fire squirt was similar to a super soaker so what are we up to there were no well, there was no fire brigade that's true okay so there wasn't any any um dedicated fire brigade at that time you had certain people that would just do that job whenever there was a fire and they'd be doing other things obviously um the rest of the time but now we have dedicated firefighters whose only job is to wait to see if there's a fire 